Hey, what's up everyone? The My Hero Academia manga just wrapped up in the most epic and emotional way possible. We've got an eight-year time skip in the final chapter, giving us a glimpse into the new generation of heroes and just how strong Deku could have become with his new high-tech power-up. We've finally got the lowdown on the new top five pro heroes after the time skip, and we can pretty much guess who else made it into the top 10. So, let's dive into it. In My Hero Academia, Chapter 430, the last chapter of the manga, we jump eight years into the future. All our favorite heroes have powered up, especially the young UA students who've graduated, become full-fledged pro heroes, and climbed the ranks. But there's one big exception, Deku. After the final villain war, Deku lost his quirk and became quirkless. Remember when the vestiges of One for All went into Shigaraki to fight off All for One's control? Well, when Shigaraki died, One for All and All for One died with him, just like when All Might passed One for All to Deku. Deku did hang on to some embers of One for All after losing the quirk, and he managed to finish the UA hero course. But by the time we see him as a 25-year-old after the time skip, those embers are gone, and he's quirkless again. Because of that, he had to give up on his dream of becoming a pro hero and ended up becoming a teacher at UA. Now, yeah, it sucks that Deku didn't get to be a hero like the rest of his Class A buddies. But honestly, Deku becoming a UA teacher makes total sense. If you're quirkless in a world full of super-powered quirks that just keep getting stronger, it's tough to compete with supervillains. Unlike All Might, Deku doesn't have some crazy strong physique. Young Toshinori was a beast even before getting his quirk. But quirkless Deku? He's just a regular guy with a big heart. He doesn't have insane strength, speed, or agility. Just a massive drive to help others and learn everything he can. So, after losing his quirk again, Deku figured he could do the most good by teaching at UA. Sure, he was bummed he couldn't keep living the hero dream. And yeah, he felt lonely sometimes, seeing his friends out there doing cool hero stuff while he was stuck in a suit, teaching kids. But he made peace with it. Deku realized he already lived his dream, even if it was short-lived, and inspired millions worldwide. Now, his way of making a difference is by helping the next generation of heroes achieve their dreams. This just fits Deku so well. He was always the guy who took notes, paid attention to every little detail, and studied harder than anyone. Growing up without a quirk, that was his only shot at someday becoming a hero. At the same time, we're learning all this about adult Deku. The final chapter hammers home that technology is advancing like crazy in the MHA world. The tech industry is booming, and the world was already ahead of our own. Now, tech is moving so fast that more students are leaning toward careers in inventing, programming, or medicine instead of becoming heroes. UA still has plenty of students, but back in the day, every kid wanted to be a hero. After the time skip, not so much. In the final chapter, we see a middle school class and their teacher asks them what careers they want to pursue as they head into high school. Out of the five students the chapter focuses on, three want non-hero careers. One wants to work at a support item design company run by Mei Hatsume. Another wants to be a doctor like Dr. Yoshi. And a third wants to join a programming company run by Gentle and Labrava. The fourth student, a boy, wants to join the UA hero course, but he's got a weak quirk, so it won't be easy, with less villain activity. There's no need to recruit tons of heroes, so only the best and strongest make it. This point about tech evolving fast and support items getting better is crucial, so keep that in mind. Now, let's chat about the new pro hero rankings, because the final chapter dropped some major hints. In a conversation between Deku and Aizawa, who's still teaching at UA, we learn that Shoto Todoroki is about to pass Bakugo in the rankings. Not because Bakugo's weaker, but because he keeps freaking out and yelling at reporters, which has knocked him down a few spots in the past. Remember what Hawks said back in Chapter 429? The hero rankings have changed, and it's not just about who's the strongest or the most popular anymore. Now, they're looking at things like how good of a citizen you are, and whether you're setting a good example for others. Pretty cool, right? But this is bad news for Bakugo, who, let's be real, has a bit of a temper problem. Don't get me wrong, Bakugo is insanely strong, but with his outbursts, he's not exactly winning any good behavior awards. On the flip side, we've got Shoto, who's also super strong and has a killer quirk. Sure, he can be a little awkward sometimes, but he's respectful to his fans, stays calm under pressure, and overall, he's just a solid dude. 
Given all that, it wouldn't be surprising if Shoto ends up overtaking Bakugo in the rankings. After all, being a hero isn't just about kicking butt, it's also about being someone people can look up to. Now, let's talk numbers. Based on the info Deku and Aizawa gave us, it seems like Shoto is currently sitting at number 5 in the top hero rankings while Bakugo is at number 4. But, and this is a big but, it looks like those positions are about to flip. Why? Because Bakugo, in classic Bakugo fashion, threatened someone for filming him. Yeah, not a great look. So, it's pretty likely that Shoto will move up to number 4 and Bakugo will drop to number 5. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, how are Shoto and Bakugo already ranked so high? Well, besides the fact that they were already crazy strong before the time skip, they've had eight whole years to get even stronger. Plus, a lot of the top heroes from before are out of the picture. Remember All Might and Endeavor? They had to retire. Hawks lost his quirk during the villain war, so he's out too. And don't forget about other heroes like Yoroi Musha, who retired during the chaos, and Crust, who, sadly, was killed back in Jaku. So yeah, the hero rankings are looking a lot different now. Speaking of the top spots, Deku mentions that Mirio Togata, our boy Lemillion, has skyrocketed to the top of the charts. Yep, Mirio is the new number one hero after the time skip. Along the way, he surpassed Kamoi Woods and Mount Lady, who are now probably sitting at numbers two and three. Before the last villain war, Kamoi Woods was already at number seven, and Mount Lady was further back at number 23. But they've been working together a lot and doing a great job, so it makes sense that they've climbed up the ranks. Now, you might be wondering, are there other heroes between Bakugo and Shoto and the top three? It's possible, but since Deku only mentioned Mirio, Kamui Woods and Mount Lady as being ahead of them, I'm sticking with the idea that they're the top three right now. If there were other heroes in the mix, Deku would have mentioned them. He's pretty detail-oriented, especially when it comes to heroes. But what about Best Genus and Mirko? Genist was at number 3 on the previous chart, and Mirko was at number 5. Assuming they're still active after the time skip, they've got to be somewhere in the top 10, right? And let's not forget, Mirko is now using advanced prosthetics, which could make her even stronger. Honestly, I'm surprised she's not already in the top 5, but maybe her, uh, let's say, less-than-friendly attitude is holding her back. Kind of like Bakugo. Other potential candidates for the top 10 include Wash, who was number 8 before, Ryukyu at number 10, Gang Orca at number 12, and Shishido at number 13. But we've also got the new generation of heroes like Tokoyami and Kirishima, who are super famous after the time skip. Their exact ranks aren't mentioned, but knowing how powerful and popular they are, I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the new top 10 as well. And hey, did you catch the part about Monoma and Hononuki from Class B? They're apparently skyrocketing in the rankings too, so they could be getting close to that top 10 as well. Class B represent. Now, let's talk about that twist at the end of the final chapter, Deku's new battle suit. It's so cool. All Might got Deku this advanced battle suit that can take the form of a suitcase, kind of like Iron Man's armor. It was made by Hatsumi and Melissa in the US, and get this, it was funded by all of Deku's former Class A classmates. How awesome is that? They all pitched in to help him become a hero again. I'm not crying, you're crying. But here's the big question. How strong can Deku be with just a fancy battle suit? Well, don't underestimate this thing. It was first introduced in Chapter 396, when All Might used it to fight Prime All for One. Yeah, All for One in his prime, thanks to Ares' powers. Even though All Might didn't have any quirks, this suit made him super strong and super fast. He even managed to replicate the quirks of all the Class A students. That's insane. The fact that this suit let a quirkless All Might hold his own against Prime All for One tells you just how powerful it is. And remember, Deku's suit is an upgraded version. It's based on all the data from All Might's battle with All for One, so you can bet it's even stronger. Plus, it's been eight years since the original was made so technology has definitely advanced a lot. Modern support item tech is no joke, and Deku's new suit is proof of that. Now, can Deku actually reach the top of the hero rankings with this suit? Maybe not the very top. Mirio's got an incredible quirk and trains like a beast, but I think Deku could definitely make it into the top 10, maybe even the top 5. With his determination, the advanced technology in his suit, and his status as a role model, he's got a real shot. What do you guys think? Do you agree with my take on the new hero rankings? Where do you think your favorite heroes are ranked now? Drop your guesses in the comments and let's see who gets it right. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button.
subscribe for more MHA content, and hit the bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.